Hi, everyone. Welcome to Plar Academy. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends, and leave a positive comment. Your support and encouragement motivate me to create more great videos. I divide the topics in Unit 1, Mechanics and Materials as as follows, like this. And all the topics are covered by following the syllabus of the Physics International A level for Edexcel, as shown here. In this video, I've covered all of Topic 1, Mechanics, focusing on motion and the subtopics of projectile motions. The projectile motion. The projectile motion is a two-dimensional motion consisting of a horizontal component with uniform velocity and a vertical component with uniform acceleration due to gravity. This occurs when a constant downward force, such as gravity, acts on an object without air resistance. The vertical component of the motion has uniform acceleration, g, so we can use kinematic equations. The horizontal component of the motion has no acceleration, so the velocity stays the same, and we can only use one equation, shown here. The time t is the same for both components of the motion. Let's compare free fall and projectile motion. When a green ball thrown horizontally with speed u and a blue ball dropped from the same height at the same time, like as shown. At the start, both balls have zero initial vertical velocity. Every second, both balls fall the same displacement and have the same downward velocity. So, they take the same time to fall and have the same acceleration due to gravity. So, both balls will reach the ground at the same time and with the same acceleration due to gravity. But, they will hit the ground at different speeds. This is because the blue ball's hitting speed is just v, y, downward, like this. And the green ball's hitting speed is the combination of v, y, and u using the Pythagorean theorem, like this. And its direction is at an angle theta to the horizontal, like this. So, the blue ball's motion is free fall, no horizontal component and a constant acceleration, g, in vertical component, the kinematic equations can use for this. The green ball's motion is the projectile motion, no acceleration and constant velocity in horizontal component and constant acceleration, g, in vertical component. We can use the kinematic equations for this too. For example, a ball is throw horizontally with speed 30 meters per second, from the top of building which 30 meters height, where air resistance is negligible. A. Find the time and speed that a ball take to reach the ground. In the vertical component motion of a ball, the displacement, s, is negative 30 meters, indicating downward, the initial velocity, u, is zero, the final velocity, v, is what we need to find, the acceleration, a, is negative 9.81 meters per second squared, indicating downward, and the time, t, is what we need to find. We use the equation s equals, u, t, plus half of, a, t squared. We substitute s equals negative 30, u equals 0 and a equals negative 9.81. We solve for time, t, like this. We get t equals 2.5 seconds for two significant figures. We use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2, a, s. We substitute u equals 0, a equals negative 9.81 and s equals negative 30. We solve for the final velocity, v, like this. We get v equals negative 24.2612 meters per second, indicating downward. This is the vertical velocity, so we combine it with the horizontal velocity using the Pythagorean theorem, as shown. We get the speed at which it hits the ground is 39 meters per second for two significant figures. And its direction is the angle theta to the horizontal, like this. The angle theta is calculated by tangent ratio, like this. So, we get theta equals 39 degrees for two significant figures. B. Find the distance between the bottom of the building and the point where a ball strikes the ground. In the horizontal component motion of a ball, the distance, s, is what we need to find. The horizontal velocity, u, is 30 meters per second and the time, t, is 2.473 seconds. We use the equation s equals u, t. We substitute u equals 30 and t equals 2.473. We get the distance s equals 74 meters for two significant figures. 
when a ball thrown from the ground with a speed u at angle of elevation of theta, where air resistance is negligible. The ball travels along the curved projectile path, as shown. At the start, we can break the initial velocity, u, into a horizontal component, u, cos, theta, and a vertical component, u, sine, theta. As the ball goes up, the vertical velocity decreases, but the horizontal velocity stays the same. As the ball reaches the highest point, the vertical velocity is zero, but the horizontal velocity stays the same. As the ball falls back down, the vertical velocity increases downward, but the horizontal velocity stays the same. When the ball reaches the ground, the vertical velocity is the same as it was at the start, but opposite direction, and the horizontally velocity stays the same. At time, t, the ball traveled a distance s, x, horizontally, and a distance s, y, upward. We can break down its motion into horizontal component and vertical component, like shown in the table. The time, t, is a common factor for both the horizontal and vertical components of motion. The speed, v, at this time can be found by combining the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity using the Pythagorean theorem, like this. The direction of the velocity, v, at this time is the angle beta to the horizontal, like this. Let's calculate the range, r, in term of the gravity, g, the angle, theta, and the initial velocity, u. In the horizontal component, we get r equals u, cos theta, times t. Let's give this the first equation. The time, t, is the same for both components, so we need to find t in the vertical component and then put into the first equation. In the vertical component, the displacement, s, is zero, the initial velocity, u, is u, sine theta, upward, the acceleration, a, is negative g downward, and the time equals t. We use the equation s equals u t plus half of a t squared. We substitute s equals 0, u equals u sine theta, and a equals negative g. We rearrange and simplify the equation like this, and let's call this the second equation. We put the second equation into the first equation, like this. We use the fact that 2 cos theta sine theta equals sine 2 theta. So, we get the range r is u squared sine 2 theta divided by g. The equation for the range r is shown. The the range r is longest when gravity g and the initial speed u are constant, which happens when sine 2 theta is 1. This means 2 theta is 90 degrees, so theta is 45 degrees. So, the longest distance, r, is achieved when when the angle of projection is 45 degrees, with a constant initial speed, u, like shown in the diagram. The the red path shows the motion of the object without air resistance. This is called projectile motion. The green path shows the motion of the object with air resistance. This causes the maximum height and the range, r, to be shorter. Exam style question 1. A ball falls through a vertical height of 0.60 meters before bouncing at point A on a ramp, as shown. A. Show that the velocity of the ball immediately before the bounce is about 3 meters per second. This is the uniform acceleration motion, so we can apply the kinematic equations. We see that the all quantities are downward, so we give the all quantities are positive. We know that the displacement s equals 0.60 meters, the initial velocity u equals 0, the final velocity is unknown, the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared due to free fall, and the time t is unknown. We use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2, a, s, to calculate the final velocity v. Substituting u as 0, a, as 9.81, and s as 0.60. We solve the final velocity v as 3.431 and approximately to 3 meters per second. You get two marks from. Use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2, a, s. Correct the final velocity v equals 3.4 meters per second. b, kinetic energy is conserved as the ball bounces off the ramp. The ball bounces at an angle of 70 degrees to the vertical. State expressions for the horizontal and vertical components of velocity of the ball immediately after the bounce. 
As the kinetic energy is conserved, so the rebound velocity is 3.4 meters per second for two significant figures. To separate the horizontal component and vertical component, like this. The horizontal component is 3 point for sine 70 degrees. The vertical component is 3 point for cos 70 degrees. So, the horizontal component is 3 point for sine 70 degrees. Vertical component is 3 point for cos 70 degrees. You get two marks from. Correct horizontal component. Correct vertical component. C, point A is 0 0.86 meters vertically above the ground and 1.23 meters horizontally from the end of the ramp as shown. Deduce whether the ball will bounce a second time on the ramp. We separate the vertical and horizontal component motion. In the vertical component, we can apply the kinematic equations due to the uniform acceleration motion. We give all downward quantities as negative and all upward quantities as positive. We know that the displacement s equals negative 0.86 meters, the initial velocity u equals positive 3.431 cos 70 degrees, the final velocity v is unknown, the acceleration r equals negative 9.81 meters per second, and the time t is unknown, this quantity is common with the horizontal component. In the horizontal component, the acceleration is zero and constant velocity. So, we know that the displacement s is unknown, the constant velocity v equals 3.431 sine 70 degrees, and the time t is unknown, this quantity is common with the horizontal component. We use the equation s equals u t plus half of a t squared to calculate the time t. Substituting s as negative 0.86, u as 3.431 cos 70 degrees, and a as negative 9.81. We solve the time t as 0.55509 seconds. We use the equation s equals v times t to calculate the horizontal displacement s. Substituting v equals 3.431 sine 70 degrees and t equals 0.55509. We solve the displacement s as 1.79 meters for two significant figures. We see that the displacement 1.79 meters is more than 1.23 meters, so a ball ball does not bounce on the ramp. We get the four marks from. Use the equation s equals u t plus half of a t squared. Use the equation s equals v t. Correct the conclusion. Correct the working out of the calculation. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.